Let's uh, give a warm welcome to Carlos. Go, but where's Carlos? Let's give him a hand. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to do something a little different and have a fresh perspective here. We're all business owners. I'm assuming all of you here are trying to further your business interests. What do we look for in a property appraiser? Well, number one, you want to make sure he's an appraiser. Naturally, it's in the title of the name, property appraiser. So that's number one. Number two, you want to make sure that this person has leadership and administrative capabilities and experience. He's not going to be appraising every day, so he has to manage his staff. You also want somebody who has some type of formal education. You don't want somebody that's going to be learning on the fly and maybe doesn't have the foundation to make the proper decisions. And I think lastly, you want somebody who brings a fresh perspective, somebody who has outside experience to be able to bring to the table. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you have a very unique opportunity to elect somebody just like that today. My name is Carlos Gobel. I am a professional appraiser. I am the only candidate in this race to have valued over 8,000 properties in the last 10 years, representing more than $3 billion of South Florida real estate. I am the only candidate in this race with an MBA. I'm the only candidate in this race who served as director at three South Florida uh, appraisal firms. I'm the only candidate in this race who's a special magistrate in Broward County. And I bring a, a different perspective as to how the valuation process should work, how assessments and appeals are handled, and how an efficient form of government should be run. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm born and raised here in the county. I'm the only native Miamian in this race. I live just up the block. I have three wonderful children. I'm not a career politician. I do not seek any further office. We don't want to be sitting here two years from now having to elect a new property appraiser because the other two property appraisers have moved on to other things. We want somebody here who has not only short-term goals, but long-term goals. I am that candidate. I humbly ask for your support. My campaign literature you can, can be found up front. You can visit the website, www.votegobel.com. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Man, he stopped with one second left. That's amazing right there. That's how you do it, right there. Two minutes. All right. That's efficient. <laughs> okay, let me call up right now Alex Dominguez. Alex. There he is. 258. Thank you folks for having us today. I think Carlos will hit the nail on the head. We need somebody in there who can run the office. Somebody who has common sense. Somebody who's not going to repeat the same mistakes that we've been making for the last 13 years. Now, politicians have a, a way of stretching the truth sometimes, not telling you the full story, but the numbers, the numbers don't lie. I want everybody to take a look at this, because you're not going to see this on anybody's website. This is straight from the Department of Revenue. For the past 15 years, these are the percent of appeals that are being overturned in Dade County. It's about 46%. Now, if you look at Broward, it's on average about 7%. So what does this tell you? That we have been over-assessed for about 13 straight years. It's the equivalent of you going to your waiter at your favorite restaurant and checking your bill 100 times, and 47% of the time, your waiter comes back and tells you he overcharged you, he's got to give you your money back. Well, the problem that we have here in Dade County is that when we give people our money back, we got to give them the money back with 12% interest. We can't afford that. And the scary part is, the county's been operating with an inflated budget for about 13 years, and as you see, we barely have enough money for cops, libraries, and so forth. We need to start putting people in office who can identify the problems. You shouldn't have to pay more taxes in Dade County than they do in Broward. It's absolutely, absolutely horrible when you start looking at the numbers. They're right next to us. They play by the same rules. They have to use the same standards to appraise property. There should be no discrepancy between Dade and Broward, 47 versus seven. And that's absolutely unacceptable. That's why I'm running. I have an MBA in public administration. I have a bachelor's degree in finance. I know numbers. I'm an executive. I'm not an appraiser, but I've been a realtor for 20 years. And we need somebody in there who's got common sense to start fixing things. Thank you very much. And again, my number is 65 on the ballot. Thank you. Good job. Very good. And then, uh, last of our appraisers is uh, Pedro Garcia. Pedro's here. There he is. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation that we have. 
you hear the two other candidates, the other two didn't bother to come here, so they don't, at least uh, appears that they don't want your vote, but we really want it. I'm the only one, former Miami-Dade County property appraiser. I'm the only one with four years experience as a property appraiser. I'm the one that established the fair and right value of all the properties in Miami-Dade County. And if you want to see the records, you can see that 66, I'm sorry, 66 billion dollars was reduced from taxable value in Miami-Dade County in the four years I was a property appraiser. When Mr. Gobel talked about experience, I can remind him that before he was born, I already was doing appraisals because I'm an appraiser for the past 38 years. When we're talking about Mr. Dominguez and all the numbers, he never mentioned that we have one million properties in Miami-Dade County. So when you have 69,000 appeals, we're talking about a 6.9% of the appeals in Miami-Dade County. They never talk about it. I spent 10 years in Miami-Dade County as a magistrate. And to be a magistrate in Miami-Dade County, you have to be an estate certified general real estate appraisal. That's an appraisal that do residential and commercial property. I am that person. I am the person with the experience. I'm gonna be working because I have a wife who's 55 years married. I got 13 grandchildren, four daughters, and I want them not to move out of Miami. I want them to stay in Miami because we have the fair and right value of the properties in Miami-Dade County. Don't forget to vote on August 26th, number 66, Pedro J. Garcia. Thank you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our appraisals. Come on, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Awesome. And now I'd like to uh, call up uh, our commissioners. Uh, and so the first one is uh, Ms. Kappa. Why don't you come on up, please? Let's give her a hand. Thank you so very much to this wonderful organization, which I am a member of, proud member of, and I've been delighted to join here for many of luncheons. And also want to do a special shout out to Christ Fellowship, which is obviously a tremendous community institution. And if I had as many yard signs as Christ Fellowship, this race would be over. <laughs> Uh, it's an honor and privilege to run for elected office. It's the highest calling in our democracy. And my plan is to be the biggest advocate you've ever seen. Those of you who know me know that's my life story. I'm an advocate. I have been all my life. I've been a 31-year resident here advocating for communities, families, children, businesses, you name it. And uh, South Dade needs, needs an advocate. There's tremendous assets here, there's tremendous opportunity, and uh, my plan is to, to grow it and stay focused on particularly the needs of small business. I'm a small businesswoman myself for 18 years. I started a nonprofit, it was called Human Services Coalition, now Catalyst Miami, average budget of about uh, two and a half million dollars, 30 employees, 20 apprentices, uh, 10 uh, volunteers, and about 50, we call them experienced professionals, that means seniors, AKA, giving back to the community through the reserve program that, that we started. So I, like you, know what it means to meet payroll. Sometimes I've had to give up my own salary to meet payroll, to keep our employees uh, going. I know what it means to pay for healthcare insurance and other benefits and, and in an economy where those costs are going up. And you know, it's a struggle, but it's important. It's important to maintain the uh, motivation of our employees, to show them that we value them, to help them with their quality of life. And small business is what makes our economy great because these are people that give back in their own community, spend that money at all of your services, and uh, that's what keeps our community uh, strong. I also know what it is to work with the county. I was uh, fortunate enough to have funding from many sources for this nonprofit, uh, including from the county. And I've managed the, the uh, audits every year with uh, flying colors from public sources, private sources, and also revenues that we generated, fee-for-service for our programs. I stepped down in December to run, and I hope you will support me. August 26, number 74, my lucky number. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. 
Now I'd like to call up our commissioner, Commissioner Bell. Pleasure to be here, and I'm looking at all the literature on the table, and I'm saying, oh my gosh, everyone's going to be so glad when this is over, right? Between the phone calls and the mail, so anyway, thank you guys for doing this. I'm just so proud to be here, and I'm proud to have been representing you right here in Palmetto Bay for four years, and locating my office right here in Palmetto Bay for four, for four years now. I'm very excited about that. On jobs, I passed a local preference ordinance that brought a true local preference to Miami-Dade County, not just where you could just pretend that you were a business of Miami County, but true local preference. We're part of Operation 305, which dealt with the port hiring. We now have uh, the same thing going at Miami Airport, where we just did $5 million of hiring on local hiring. Um, I brought real reform to the Beacon Council as chairwoman of the Economic Development Port Miami Committee. And we brought real reform to the Beacon Council, and now you're seeing a big difference on the attention that, you, that we all get here in South Dade now than we had before. Also, I worked with, in partnership with the Beacon Council, and created MiamiDadeSites.com, which I know you're very interested in. It, it provides a free service to anybody in the real estate industry, in fact, anybody, period, that wants to inquire about relocating a business or locating a business to Miami-Dade County. Um, I do my monthly work days with different businesses, and uh, not only do I bring attention to that business, but we bring support. It lets me know what that particular business goes through. My husband has a small business, and we know what it's like to make that payroll every single, every other week. It is a it's tough, and this is a tough economy, and that's why I've also fought, fought the effort to raise any taxes on any of you. And that's been one of the things I've been fighting for jobs, keeping taxes low, and true county reform. I put term limits on the ballot for the first time, and it was decades and decades, so now we have term limits for the first time that I can, in, in, in ever, for the first time we have eight year term limits on the county commission, and I'm a proud sponsor of term limits. I work very well with the Economic Development Council. It's my, it was my pleasure to provide some of the seed dollars to get the EDC back up off the ground. Um, I did true ethics reform, true lobbying reform, we just passed, and a puppy mill prevention ordinance, so I'm excited about that. I passed jury parking legislation, where anybody now who does goes to jury duty gets parking for free. Listen, thank you. It's been a pleasure to serve you. I look forward to serving you at least four more years. It is a pleasure, and I don't. It's not lost on me that what I do is called public service. Thank you. All right, and so now we'll, we're going to get to our uh, candidates for mayor. So let's begin with uh, Peter Eaton, please. Peter. Thank you, Sammy. Good afternoon. I don't have to do a whole lot of introduction. Most of you know me. I'm a 30-year resident of Palmetto Bay. I'm a member of this fine organization, the Palmetto Bay Business Association as well as the EDC as, a, as an associate uh, member and a member of the Downtown Redevelopment Task Force of Palmetto Bay. My passion is sustainable economic development in all of South Dade, but particularly in Palmetto Bay. I want to point out this election really isn't about me. It's about us, all of us. Twelve years ago, this fine village incorporated, and I think we got off a really good start. I think in recent years, things have come off the tracks a little bit. There's been a, there's been a great deal of divisiveness within this community. It has drawn deep divisions within our neighborhoods. And we've got to get past it. It is time to put the past behind us and move into the future. My idea, my concept, is to bring everybody back under the big tent. And that's residents, churches, schools, businesses, associations like this one, like neighborhood associations, like the Elks, like American Legion, like Palmetto Bay Village Voice, like the concerned citizens of Old Cutler. Everybody has standing, everybody gets treated with respect, everybody gets heard. I've knocked on over a thousand doors during this campaign I am telling you that that's what the people of this village want. And I think working together, we can make this community a far better place than it already is. The infrastructure's in place. It's a change in attitude. It's a change in direction. We can do it. We can make this 
the best city, I think, in the state of Florida. I've done this before as vice mayor of St. Petersburg. I can do it again as mayor. My pledge is to make this future vision your reality. Thank you very much. Very good, thank you. I'd like to call up uh, Patrick Fiore now. Patrick? Uh, thank you, Sammy. Could somebody get Grant Miller a chair? He's always, he's always standing. Right? <laughs> what is that? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'll be very brief. Um, many of you know me. Patrick Fiore. I ran for a city council, village council in 2010. I live with my wife and my two children, both in college. Uh, you'll notice on the tables a lot of flyers and you won't see any of mine. I run strictly a grassroots campaign, door to door to door to door, just like we did in 2010. And homeowners associations, events, phone calls, meeting people in the street. I ran a council, we did a councilman for a day event. I tried to do that every month for the last few years. Thanksgiving time, we did a food drive to feed a lot of the people in our, in our village and elsewhere in the county. This is done for three years in a row. Consistently voted not to raise taxes. I worked with Commissioner Bell's office and with other county staff to get the roads paved. 77th Avenue, 152nd Street, 144th Street, uh, 77th Avenue was just recently done. I think we have a great, uh, tremendous town. This is why I moved here in, in 2007. I think we need to move forward. I think public service is all about helping people. Uh, uh, help residents achieve their goals and help people, period. And I think that is what public service is all about. So, Sammy, I thank you. And just uh, for a note, the election in Palmetto Bay is November 4th. It's not August 26th, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Thank you. I now would like to call up Eugene Flint. Let's give him a hand. Eugene. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited to be here. It's always fun to see everyone. I got a few remarks today that some of you, I look a little bit different, so I think my, it might be the glasses. <laughs> so, I, is, this, is this any better? <laughs> no, but in any respect, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed the years we've had together. I do want to give a special shout out and thanks to, uh, where is he? It, you know, he has the shortest attention span. Is Mr. Miller gone already? I mean, he was such an integral part of starting this. Uh, thank you to Christ Fellowship as the current host of this uh, monthly event. It's a great time for the businesses to get together. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. It's hard to compress what I think were eight great years. You might remember me from some things like the Palmetto Bay Steering Committee, I chaired the Municipal Advisory Committee, working with and fighting with the county. You know, sometimes you have to know when to fight, and you know, have to know when you, it's time to compromise, and you have to know when it's time to move on. And I think I've exhibited some very good common sense in those regards over the past few years, because in not single-handedly doing anything, but working with and being at times a facilitator, and sometimes creating conciliation and at times be in that boot to move things forward we've worked hard to move forward I'd like to say we still have a lot of potential in this town but I'm very proud of some of the things that we've done here proud of things like a lot of park there's stuff left undone that I want to pick up and start moving forward on a lot more events at the lot of park a lot more family friendly a lot more uh, public friendly different kind of events, not just weddings. It's a lot of things that we've envisioned there. Uh, I think the biggest thing we need to do, and part of the success of our first eight years, was all the meetings we held. Hundreds of people, and that's not hyperbole, hundreds of people participated on our early committees. And we established some great levels of service. And I think it's time, you know, Pinecrest did theirs at 10 and 15 years. It's time after 12 years to revisit and create another strategic plan. 
And I'm not saying this is something that's going to pop up on a council agenda for your yay or nay. I'm saying this is something I'm saying I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. This is something that you're going to work with me to do. So with that pat on the back, which is better than what could happen, I want to say thank you. Go to my website, EugeneFlynn.com. And in fact, go to the Palmetto Bay website because I think you'll find a lot of our history there that I'm very proud of having my part in creating. So thank you. Thank you, Eugene. All right, and now I'd like to call our mayor up. Mayor so stands up. Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. It has been my tremendous honor and pleasure to serve as your mayor for the past four years. When I came to this forum four years ago, I made promises to you, and I've kept those promises. We've had the same 2.447 tax rate over the last four years, even as ad valorem fell down due to down economy, we continued to contribute to our reserves. In 2009 and 10, they were 9.8. Today, they are 13.1 million. A strategic plan to keep our residential taxes low and bring better services, economic development, and a better look to our US-1 area is being developed through the Downtown Redevelopment Task Force. Standing and Poor's says we are fiscally sound and well managed and have consistently been awarded us with a double A and a double A bond ratings. Public safety remains the highest priority. We now have two additional police officers and have located two fire rescue stations in the village. We've built community through expanded excellence in our parks and programming. The Lotta is now fully renovated and providing classes, family activities, and venue rental. Ensured excellence in our a schools by creating the Education Compact that was unanimously approved by our council and the school board. Palmetto Bay as a board member in the Green Corridor shows its commitment to sustainable communities by having the highest level of participation in the PACE program that provides access to clean energy and hurricane hardening. Palmetto Bay is still a young village and it has come far. I believe it is time for our community to work together, residents, government, and all aspects of our community to create a vision, a plan for the future of our village, its parks, infrastructure, and economy. To create a vision of what the future of our village will be. We work together to create Palmetto Bay. Let's work together to create a plan for the next 10 or 20 years for the great future for our village. I am honored to serve as your mayor for the last four years. I promise to continue to work for you each and every day. I promise to continue to keep your taxes low, enhance your quality of life, keep our village safe, and work with you to make Palmetto Bay the premier place to live, work, and raise families. I keep my promises. Thank you to Christ Fellowship for doing this. They, they do this every year. They really lead the community and what they do for our community, not only business, but everybody comes here under the tent. Okay. And he's my neighbor. That's right. We do. <laughs> Always, if there's something happening on our street, I'll tell her about it. Hey, what's going on over here? Anyway, so. Good. Thank you, Mayor. All righty. We're going to go now to uh, our seat one. We're going to begin with... Uh, Karen Cunningham. Let's give her a hand. Karen. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Pastor Sammy and the board of the Palmetto Bay Business Association uh, for bringing all of these great candidates uh, in front of leaders of the business community. I know I've met many of you over the past couple of years, but I wanted to share a little bit about myself. I'm a native of Miami, Florida. I'm a graduate of Palmetto, class of 1981. I almost forgot the year. Uh, I'm a 20-year resident here in Palmetto Bay. Uh, worked for Miami-Dade County Public Schools, taught first grade for 18 years, and for the last 10 years I've been very honored to be able to advocate for teachers, students, and public education with United Teachers of Dade. I'm also 
of all the things I am, mother to this beautiful girl over here, my daughter Megan, and a friend to many of you in the room. I have great support from many civic leaders in our community, names that you may know. Dr. Larry Feldman, Vice Chair of the School Board, uh, Vice Mayor John Dubois here in Palmetto Bay, Mayor Cindy Lerner in Pinecrest, and Howard Tendrich, our former councilman. And they can speak to my work ethic and professionalism, but at the end of the day, it's the people living in Palmetto Bay and the people who own businesses living in Palmetto Bay that drive me each day as we've been knocking door to door and encourage me to go on. In November and January, I took a snapshot of what was important to the residents in the community, and they came up with a series of things ranging from fighting crime in the community, maintaining our high quality public schools and private schools, uh, local streets and traffic, parks and programming. But we know that in order for Palmetto Bay to prosper, it's the businesses in the community that we also need to support. So as your council person, I will foster relation, relationships and partnerships to bring small, a small business development network to Palmetto Bay to complement services already provided by Palmetto Bay Business Association and the Economic Development Council. I would like to promote access to capital through, through the recently enacted micro-lending legislation and would like to work with the village to analyze current policy and see how they're affecting businesses so we can market better. I'd also like to create a five-year strategic plan for Palmetto Bay and would love for you, the business owners, to have the opportunity to get to know me a little bit better and I have the opportunity to learn more about you. Thank you very much for your time today. I'd like to call up, here he comes right now, Dave Zisman, let's give him a hand. Hello, my name is Dave Zisman. I own a company called Evenings Delight Fireplaces. I am one of those small businesses in this community that has to make a payroll every day, that pays rent, that pays taxes, that pays Florida Power Light, and all the other things that go with it. That's what I do every day. That's what I've done for the last 40 years. That is why I am part of the uh, Palmetto Bay Downtown Redevelopment Task Force. I believe I was the first member. I am the Planning Architecture uh, Committee Chairperson. I've worked on that committee for now well in excess of a year. It's a great project. Everybody in Palm Middle Bay should be proud of it. Uh, the, most of the council's in favor of it. And this is something that's going to bring real business to Palm Middle Bay, where right now we have vacant buildings. So very utmost important. The main thing I want to talk to you folks today about is we can do better. What I mean by that, the last four to six years of Palmetto Bay's Council, we've accomplished basically nothing. It's time we put all our petty differences aside and work for the betterment of all the residents of Palmetto Bay. Stop spending money on attorneys. Stop being sued. Stop suing. Stop all of that shenanigans. We're a small town. Neighbor has been pitted against neighbor for too long. Let's put our differences aside. Let's get a council up there that can work together. The, the, the crowning achievement that I saw of this council was, which one of the council members brought forward, was the dog barking ordinance. I'm sure some of you remember that. Is that really the best we can do, talking about barking dogs? No, let's bring business to this community. Let's make our streets safe. Let's enhance our police department. Let's make Palmetto Bay the greatest place to live in America. Thank you very much. Very good. You did not say shenanigans, did you? Oh, come on. So here we go. Council uh, seat uh, number three. Council members, here we go. Uh, let's start off with James Archer Shett. Where's James? Did I see? You? There he is. Right there you go. Come on, man. Let's give him a hand. First of all, thank you for coming. Thank you for hosting this event. You know, I was reading something the other day that caught my eye, and uh, I didn't want to screw it up standing in front of all these people because it's been quite a while since I spoke publicly. And it said public service means serving the public interest, doing the greater good. I have dedicated my entire life to doing that. I have served between federal and state 33 years. I was in the Army for three years. I went to Vietnam in 1969 when I was 19. I was in the 
state law enforcement for nine years, and I was with the Drug Enforcement Administration for 21 years. I have lived and traveled throughout basically the world. DEA offered me an opportunity to see and meet the world on my own terms. I live in Palmetto Bay because I love Palmetto Bay. I love the people here, and I want to be part of preserving and protecting this little oasis in which we live. There's a lot of divisions within this city, and I would like to be able to be one of the people who can overcome those divisions. I am not tied at the hip at anybody. I am an independent person. I don't belong to any party. I am doing this with my wife, my money, and my supporters. I believe that I can be a good supporter of what this city needs and what this city needs in the future. With my combination of government service and my combination of being an owner of a company for the last 10 years, I know a little bit about both sides of that wall. I know that you can't come into government with a simple mentality of business and organize government that way, just like you can't come with government and run a business. Believe me, I know. I've been, I've been out there building my business to the level that I want. So I urge you to vote for me, Jim Shedd. Go to jimshedd.com. You can find out more about it. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to call up now Larissa Siegel Law. Let's give her a hand. Come on. How's that wheel power doing, everybody? We all right? We're good? All right. I am last. I think that's a good thing because you will remember about willpower and hopefully you'll be able to hear my message and remember it with all that good food you have in you. Um, I believe our village, village needs leadership to move us to the future. We have wonderful community resources, such as the Palmetto Bay Village Association, uh, Business Association, and others. We have great parks. We have uh, a lot of great people, and I think that we can do better. I agree with the existence. There's a lot of things that we can do. I think we need to sustain and improve our services, and to do that, we need to invigorate our growth. The biggest opportunity we have to uh, our highest value services without increasing residential taxes is to focus on the smart development of the commercial areas around US-1. I think we need a very uh, uh, critical um, strategic plan to be able to figure out how to do it, what needs to be done, how to do it, get all the input from all the appropriate stakeholders that are involved, and then work that plan. Make sure that we deliver what we thought we were going to deliver and review it to make sure that it is representative of what the entire village wants. I'm honored to be part of the candidates willing to serve the community. Every voter needs to pick their best candidate. My training and experience is in business process and leadership. That's two really important skills that I will bring to the council. Methodical decision making. I will review and understand the aspects of every situation and every decision and really strong problem solving. We need leaders who will work through the issues and consider all the aspects. I'm willing to serve because I want my, my children, my many children, I have four kids, my family and all the residents to be really proud of where we live. And I want a government that works for all of us. I have a deep, deep belief in the representative democracy that we live in. I'm not experienced in politics. I will bring a fresh perspective, open mind to village council. I'm experienced in bringing people together and producing concrete results. I speak my mind, I'm not afraid to ask questions, I will be an independent thinker working for all the neighbors. I'm asking you for your support so we can build an exceptional village of Palmetto Bay. Thank you for your time. All right, and then uh, last but not least, Henry Clifford. Come on up, Henry. I'm Henry Clifford, candidate for Council District 3. I live uh, two houses away from here. My kids were schooled right down the street. Uh, I've been a firefighter, paramedic, educator. Um, many here already know me as I've been working to make this a nice place to live for a very long time. A nice place to live means different things to people, and some of our meetings have reflected those differences. While our differences are important, I believe our similarities are more important. Excuse me. 
We all believe in great schools, safe streets, quiet neighborhoods, busy stores, beautiful trees to walk beneath, great parks for ourselves and our children, and respect for each other. We all want to hold and protect what we have. When we call for help, we want it to arrive quickly. We want more and better. We expect our taxes to be low, our services high, our streets and our finances to be sound. We expect good government for the people we elect to keep their promises. For people who work for us, remember that they do work for us. We expect them to listen to us, to have a plan, to be asked and informed before that plan is set in stone, to know what is happening. We expect them to tell the truth, and all the truth. We expect no secrets, no surprises. Everyone wants these things, so if you don't hear at least some of these from every candidate, that would be a surprise. With me, there are no surprises. I didn't show up yesterday making promises. I've been living, working, breathing this for 35 years. I believe in trying to make real the good ideas people have on the council or on the street. Call me with an idea or problem, I'll make it happen, make it right, or tell you what can be done. I respect your rights and am beholden to no one except the voters. With me, what you see is what you get. Remember me in November, Henry Clifford. Very good. Let me see if I can give myself a couple of seconds here to get my things together. All right, and now we're going to uh, go to our judges uh, that are here today. And uh, the first one I'd like to call up is er uh, Erica Shanty. Is that correct, Erica? Nope. Man, I was so looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right, how about Mary Gomez? Where's Mary? Come on up, Mary. Let's give her a hand. Come on, pump it up, babe. Do your thing. All right. That's that willpower holding out. Thank you. I won't keep you long. I know that uh, it's been overextended, but I'm actually very privileged to be here, and I'm glad that they're letting us speak to you as judicial candidates, because all of you are business people. Someone mentioned something about lawsuits. We know those are pesky little things, but they're here, there, and everywhere. So what happens to the judicial races? Most of the time, people don't know who to vote for. We don't get to go out to meet the community. Because guys, this is a very big county. I've been campaigning for over a year. And I can tell you that I don't think I've even made a dent in this community. But I'm here, as other colleagues are here, because we care about the community. We want you to know that we need to partner up as a judiciary with the community. After all, we're here to serve you. I am running in groups 27. This is my first time running. It's an open seat. Judge Dresnick will be retiring at the end of his term. But I am in a contested race. I do have an opponent. And I'm here to tell you today a little, not so much about my legal experience, because you'll hear that we all have it. Honestly, we wouldn't be able to run if we didn't have it. What I want you to look at is what we bring that sets us apart. And in my particular race, I can tell you that I have the correct temperament and the, the experience and also the sound judgment that I bring to the bench that will make me a good judge. But I'm also a mediator. I've mediated for over 10 years, high complex family marital cases, juvenile and probate cases. Those are very difficult cases to settle and I have about a 95% success rate as a mediator. But I'm also a special magistrate for the town of Miami Lakes. And that has afforded me an extra opportunity to act as a neutral and impartial person. These are things that are paramount to the office of judge. So I ask that on August 26, please you vote Mary Gomez, number 46. Thank you, God bless you. Now I'd like to call up Martin Zilber, is that correct, Martin? Uh, come on up, sir, let's give him a hand. Good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Nice to uh, address Palmetto Bay, born and raised uh, here in this community. So it's always a pleasure to uh, get out and see everybody. Here with my uh, daughter today, and my wife and son are also helping me on the campaign. It's a lot about family. My wife actually is a small business owner, pretty close to here in South Miami. She owns a clothing store at ease. Always good to plug my wife. Happy wife is a happy life, right? So we wanted to do that. And uh, I, I do really understand, actually, the business world. One of the things we do talk about a little bit is our experience. I'm one of the few candidates who's a business lawyer. That's a big part of my background. I'm in-house counsel for several real estate and mortgage companies. 
and uh, started my career in house counsel for some insurance defense companies. In addition to that, I've also been a judicial officer, traffic magistrate here for several years. I've been fortunate to have been endorsed by your community newspapers as well as the Miami Herald and many of the different uh, unions, professors and nurses and uh, police unions. I ask that you take a look at my cards or the website. My website is martinzilberforjudge.com and you can see the different folks from the community and groups that have endorsed me. And of course, my most important endorsement would be your vote, uh, please, on August 26th. Often people forget about the uh, judges. I know that you all are going to come out and vote. You have a lot of uh, wonderful candidates out on the ballot. So we know you're going to be out there and active, but we just hope that you remember to come down on the ballot and remember the judges because it's important. We also um, affect everybody's life each and every day, and it, it's important that you get to know who we are and a little bit about us. So that's why we ask that you go on the website and see our experiences. I've been practicing lawyer for 26 years, and I look forward to taking the next level and being in full-time public service as your next circuit court judge. So it's Martin Zilber, my number is 49. Again, pleasure to be here today and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call up Stephen Miller, right here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stephen Milan. Milan. No, no, never correct the pastor. <laughs> I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> Masters and wives, you never correct me. And I'm running to be your judge. And I'm running for a very simple idea. The idea is, is that the first time you meet a judge should be in the community, not in a courtroom. To me, the judge serves as a conscience of the community, but you really can't do that if you don't know the people, if you don't connect it to the people. If you don't have any sensitivity and sensibility about what's going on outside your front door, outside the courtroom. That's like having a pastor who's judging the health of his community just based on who sits in front of him on a Sunday, but doesn't realize that there's more people sitting outside his very front door that are homeless and have other problems than who's sitting in front of him. So to that end, I've been serving this community for 27 years. 25 years, I'm sorry. Um, I came down to work for Janet Reno. I worked as a prosecutor for seven years. I've been in private practice the last 17 years in my own small business, my own office here in Kendall doing criminal defense, civil litigation, family law, probate, bankruptcy, all the areas that uh, a circuit court judge deals with. But most importantly, I work with our, our youth, our at-risk youth. Why? Because our kids are our future. The courts should be the secular house of hope, and yet they're not, especially for them. To that end, I work with the 5,000 role models of excellence. I work with the Boy Scouts. I'm an Eagle Scout. I'm a scoutmaster of my son's troop in Kendall in, at St. Timothy's, my own church. Don't worry, I don't correct the pastor there either. <laughs> I work with the YMCA. I'm on the board of directors of the Alipata YMCA and many, many other organizations. Because at the end of the day, community is family and your family is your community. And that's why I need your vote and your support. Now, I'm very honored to have the support of our working individuals, our teachers, our, doc our, our, teachers, our firemen, our police officers, our nurses. But most importantly, like Martin said, the most important is yours. So thank you very, very much, and I look forward to seeing you. Remember, August 26th. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Million. <laughs> All right. And then uh, last but certainly not least, and I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. I don't want to mess it up, but Judge Labray, Labrie, are you here? There you go. Let's give her a hand. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Judge Fleur Labrie. Yes, it's French, but I'm a fraud. I don't have a single French ancestor. Uh, I'm a circuit court judge, currently serving uh, in the criminal division. I previously served our community as a county court judge before being elevated to the circuit court when there was a vacancy due to the retirement of Judge Platzer. I'm honored to serve our community. Even though I've only been a judge for three years, I've served in the court system for over 20 years. I worked nine years for the state attorney, uh, almost five years for the Florida Attorney General, and close to five years at the Third District Court of Appeal for Judge Rudy Sarando. I'm passionate about the law, I'm passionate about helping people, and uh, the reason why I believe that I'm the best judge in my race is not only because of my experience as the incumbent judge, and because of all the endorsements and, and, uh, that I've received, which you can look at on my website, I'm not going to bore you with them, but because I am a cancer survivor. I'm blessed to say I'm an 11-year cancer survivor, and I have spent the last 11 years since I was lucky enough to survive uh, 
making the most of every day. I know that you cannot take life for granted. You have to do the best that you can every day with what you've been given. And I've been blessed to have been given a lot, and I want to give back to our community. I want to use my legal ability, my skills, my knowledge as an appellate attorney. I've worked in both trial and appellate courts in both civil and criminal cases uh, to, to help the people of our community. I'm passionate about the law. I'm passionate about helping people. I helped uh, start a charity for breast cancer survivors uh, in dragon boat racing so that we can show women that it's possible to thrive rather than merely survive after diagnosis and treatment for cancer. I'm active in school uh, education. I've worked in schools all over our county. Uh, I've gone to uh, work at schools in Florida City, all the way to Miami Gardens, West State at Braddock High School, and I helped start the Legal and Public Affairs Program at Miami High. So I love this community, I love service, and I would hope that you would uh, honor me with your vote. I'm number 50 on the ballot, Judge Fleur Labrie. Thank you. Uh, just a comment, the judges that you just heard, are none of them are running against each other. None of their opponents are here. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and if, if they win, they get to wear those cool robes. So. <laughs> well, listen, what a has this been fun? It's been amazing, right? And I, and I got I to gotta congratulate you guys. You hung in there. You had some great willpower. And, uh, and check, I want to read, everybody remembers Bobby Knight, right? There's a guy that had some willpower, right? All right, so check it out. Quote from Bobby Knight, the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. All right, it's all in the preparation. So you did good, you got set, you were prepared. Now, enjoy the rest of your day here. Look, it's only a few minutes after one. Network, get to know some people. Serve someone today. What a great day. Get out and vote. Come on now.